LA Kings Fan Talk with your boys, Rodney, Rob, and Darren. What's up, Kings fans? Today we are talking Kings prospects because we do not want to talk about that horrible loss to the Edmonton Oilers. So this is going to be our list of our highest ceiling players as of the midseason mark. Hey, before, before we, we get there, Rod, yep. let's, there's there's going to be people pounding on their desks about why isn't why isn't Velarde on this list and spoilers stuff like that. So we all got together and talked about how we want to make this list and set some parameters. And one of the biggest parameters we have are they have to be Calder Cup eligible i'll call her uh trophy eligible um so that removed quite a few players that are really young that are with the squads it removed your mikey anderson's toby bjornfoot's gabriel velardi's jared anderson dolan's so even though they might still be in a prospect kind of category they will not be on the list because they were not eligible because of the parameters we set for us. So. And with that, at number 10, Rasmus Kupari. Yeah, so to me, I had him a little bit around this point, but he's going to be a winger to me. I think we saw what he can do at center. But um, he's skilled. We've seen that at the NHL. He's smooth skating. But I think he's just not quite defensively uh, capable or determined enough to play the center position like a lot of the guys are. So I think that's the only thing that's kind of hurting him in my eyes. You know, I saw that the rain started him at center last game. And I'm like, what are you doing? Let's get him experience on the wing. Because that's where he's going to need to play if he is going to make the Kings roster. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm pretty sure he can play both wings. He could play his off wing as well. But what, you know, we're, I hope he's not broken. Because um, what, what a skill set he has speed, he's got great size, and just. He can do a lot of different things, and he's only 21 years old, and that's going to be kind of a theme as well to our prospect list because there were some older prospects that we could have thrown on here. Don't want to ruin it a little bit, but we like the young guys. Yeah, I'm thinking his his weakest, to me, his the weakest part of his game is, is his board game, controlling the puck along the boards and, and just – Puck possession, just holding on to the puck, which is why I think he translates better as a winger than a center. And I think he kind of projects. He could, he could, he could be top nine. He could, he could play a third line, and even maybe even sneak onto a second line with some. If yeah, the team's sure. not very deep, he almost needs to be in that Cali spot right now, playing on the fourth line, learning from Lemieux and Lazat how to play on the boards, but. You know, because I think Kelly has learned a lot playing in that role. At number nine, Tyler Madden. Yeah, I think uh, the only thing that like puts, pushes him down is his size. I, I have him down as a winger. I know they list him as a center, but it's I think he's for sure going to be a winger at the top level. He's played, I think, wing pretty much his whole career with the rain. Uh, I have him as, you know, he's a... Solid two way forward, lots of skill. I think he just needs that size. That's about it. I, I don't have his metrics up right now, but he's probably five eleven, like, one fifty. Yeah, exactly. Like I think five eleven. You know, if he can get up to one seventy, like one seventy five, then we can start talking about him in the NHL. I think that's his only problem. Um, you know, he's. I had I had trouble with him making the list a little bit in my head. Um, with my scout eyes, but my fan eyes, 
I have him way up on my list because I just love the way he plays. He's so tenacious. Um, but yeah, he needs definitely to pack on some weight. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Wayne Simmons a little bit. Just the the way the jersey just hangs off of him because he's so dang skinny. And But if he fills out, but I don't know how much he's going to fill out. He's 22 years old, but he does have a skill set that with his tenacity he he ends up doing some things that not too many of our prospects can do and i think he's he's one of the better finishers on top of that so we'll see if he if he makes a move to a wing if if they keep him as a center i can see him being blake a taller blake lazat for sure i mean he's i think he's that tenacious so yep definitely I think, uh, to like, you look at our depth at center and it's almost a benefit if he can play wing, you know what I mean? Like we have so many guys behind, you know, at the NHL level who are going to be almost locked into center for a couple more seasons. So if he can play wing and then fill in a center if needed, it's kind of a benefit for him. Just yeah. got, just got to put on some weight. Definitely. And number eight, Samuel Fagamo. Sure, I think he's uh, he was a guy at the start of the season before, like, at the very beginning of training camp, stuff like that. I was like, he could challenge for a roster spot. Like, I thought it was between, like, him and Kaliev, just because they have that finishing potential. But I think you saw with his, like, couple games at the NHL, like, he just needs to add a little bit more strength. I don't think he's a negative necessarily defensively, but that's probably his only, like, you, you could want more from that side if you want. If he's gonna be in the NHL, but he's a sniper to me. Yeah. So I like I like that he's one of the few that we have that aren't oh center that's that needs to move to one side. He can play either wing, mm-hmm. um, and he's one of our elite finishers. You know, in in our whole system, I've I like him a lot. He's he's high high on my list. Kind of reminds me of a young Arvidsson. Yeah, well, and, and even bigger than Arverson, that's not hard to do. Um, but I I think he's an NHL ready right now. He has an NHL shot. He has an NHL finish, even though he's Swedish. But yes, he's I I'm I'm a big Fogmo fan, and I will butcher any name I want to butcher. So get over it. All right, at number seven, every Kings fan's favorite prospect, Alex Turcotte. Number seven, I think uh, he was a little higher on my list, but overall, I mean, I think with the names above him, he fits right here. He's probably going to be a center at top level. Right now, he probably slots in as like a third or fourth line center. But they're also trying him out of wings, so that could be interesting too. But, I mean, I think with him, it's size, and he just needs experience. I think he's only played, you know, 70 games since he's been drafted, whereas, you know, most other guys by this point have played 100 or more. So, I think other than that, you know, I'm not too mad about where he's at. I think he's a high floor guy too. I think that's the other thing. I think we just heard Rob get a text message from Turcotte wondering why he's so low on our list. Rob? Well, we'll see. It's funny. Is he's uh, lower middle of our list, and that's the worst spot for the fickle King fans out there because it's too low for the guys that, that believe in him. It's too high for the guys that can't stand him. So we just absolutely infuriated probably all 14 of our listeners that that they do they're just not happy with his placement on our list so that's exactly why we place them where we place them because we're not here to please anybody um but turcotte it's i like what you said there darren he has a high floor i don't think his worst that we get out of him is pretty dang good yeah, it's just I'm not so sure how high his ceiling is because of because of the physical parts of, of his game. 
Um, and he's a little fragile. Um, he's a little undersized, but he's definitely a driver. I think if even the people that don't like Turcotte much and the ones that are going to complain about him being drafted so high, and I think they can all agree he's definitely a driver of the game. So he's he's ours, and even if he ends up being a a third line center as his ceiling, yeah, I mean. I think I, I didn't write any comparisons down, but, you know, if he could be Jarrett Stoll-esque, you know what I mean? Like third line center, just kind of like he's going to play well defensively, PK, and you hope for, you know, 35, 40 points a season from him at the, you know, at the low end. I think that'd be and thank you so much for saying Jarrett Stoll and, and not, Mike Richards, like everyone, every single person has tried to say. I, I've used that comparison before, but yeah. I mean, I, I think talking about his floor, I think it's, you know, Jared Stoll level. So, yeah, because yeah, he's he's going to be just defensively responsible as well. So, mm-hmm. all right. Number six, Martin Chromiak. Ooh, wild card. Yeah, I. I I think I had him close to this spot on my own list. And I think he's one of those guys whose potential is very high, but he could also be Martin Furk, where he's a career AHLer. Sorry, Rod. You know, he's going to light up the AHL and everyone's going to wonder why he's not in the NHL. And then, you know, something doesn't click for him. But I think he's the other question that a lot of people are going to ask is, is it Shane Wright that's driving him? I don't think it is. I think they drive each other. Like they both make plays for one another all the time on the ice. So, uh, but he's a for sure going to be a sniper for us. I think that'd be a ceiling. So, but. yeah, and 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 like uh, Fogmo, here's another one that's not a center. Hey, let's move him to wing. He's he's a straight winger. He's a right winger that's going to go out there, and and it's all about the finish for me. You know, guys that can act. I don't know if that's why I like so much guys that can score because being a Kings fan for so long, watching guys that just can't score over the last 10 years is just making me just fiend for guys that can score goals. Um, But Chromiak, seeing him in the World Juniors, seeing him in juniors right now, doing what he's doing. I think he's got real high, and I think he can be a top six winger in our organization when he wins all said that. He's only 19 years old. Um, this is all hope and and prayer, but uh, one of these guys have to pan out. One of these guys have to pan out to be a top six forward for us sooner or later. And I, I like him. I like him a lot. Well, that brings us to number five. Ooh, the nitty gritty, top five. Top five. Let's go with like and subscribe. Oh, wait, that's not one of our prospects, but we would appreciate it. (laughs) Our actual number five, Sean Dursey. Yeah, I think the good thing with him and why he was so high on my list is we're seeing his floor right now i think he's a pretty good offensive defenseman at, even at this point to where unless his defensive game falls off a cliff he's gonna be able to stay in the nhl as a third pair power play guy and you know if his transition defense and his you know end zone defense picks up he could be top four or top pair guy you know what i mean but i think his ceiling is those levels, but I think we're also he's also this high on our list because of his floor where we see his floor right now. Yeah. Um actually he wasn't gonna even be on my list, honestly. Um until the the game before. The the one game he actually that I spoke about, he dropped the gloves and showed that he was going to stick up for himself. And I'm like, okay, then he does have some, has a little grit to him. He, he, he cares, you know, more about than just his hair. 
You know, I, that sometimes I was questioning some of that, <laughs> wondering what we're going to get them. And also a reason why I was going to keep them off my list as well was simply because of the logjam of right-handed defensemen we have to choose. So it's kind of hard to say what a ceiling is on him when he, he I don't think he'll ever be our number one right-handed defenseman. So that's why I was always like maybe not putting them up so high on a prospect list because the ceiling isn't going to get there, not because of what he can't physically do. It's because what other guys in our organization are just going to be better than him. But, but man, he's, he's made a real impact on the Kings this season right now. So that's, that says a lot. All these guys that we're hoping get to the NHL, he's in the NHL right now. And if he started the season with us, who knows if he's even in the conversation. He could be in the conversation to to win the Calder Trophy. Because, you know, they, obviously they're going to talk about the Red Wing defenseman insider. But as far as rookie defensemen go, he's he's made a pretty big impact. Yeah, so, he's second in team scoring. And, I mean, he's played... 15 less games than most of their guys about, you know? Yeah. So, so the fact that he's second on defensive scoring for us is, yeah. is big to me. That's why and, I think his, and, his and score it's is great to high. see an asset we got back in a trade for somebody actually have an impact on our team rather than, Oh, Hey, we traded for a prospect that just floundered away in the, the minors forever. And we never got any real taste of, well, shoot, we wasted that trade because Nothing ever came back and helped us. He's helping us 100% right now. So that, that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm really liking his offensive game. He just needs to work on not getting beat wide. And speaking of never getting beat wide, number four on our list, Brock Faber. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you saw what he, uh, you saw what he was doing in the Olympics. I think he was the leading minute guy for the usa like they they trust him already at that level and he's 19 like i think he's a potential top four defenseman he's probably a little bit more limited offensively than a guy like Dursey, but you know if he's more offensive upside matt roy i mean that's a guy who's you know you're gonna put him in pan on your team for the next 10 years you hope so um, I think he's he's probably got a little bit lower ceiling than than some of the other guys ahead on the list, and that's what brings him down. But his floor is pretty high already. Like I mean, in my eyes. So yeah, and you know there there is that that separate standard for defensemen on on how long they it takes for them to develop, and defensively he's just so good. And I've actually watched him play quite a bit, you know. Um, he's just so solid defensively. I and At only 19, you know, he comes, plays a couple years in the minors with us. Uh, is he? Are we fast-tracking him? Who knows? Um, but he's, he's as good – he could he's as good as a couple of our rain defensemen right now and our rain defensemen are pretty good so you know I I, I think his ceiling's real high um definitely top four pairing for sure it'd be interesting to see if he goes straight to the Kings after college or goes straight to Ontario but yeah we're, we're not calling him Kel McCarr or anything like that but. <laughs> right no, I could see him I could see him taking a couple like you know maybe half a season there and he lights it up or he's shut down, whatever you want to say and forces the issue, you know, I'm a like, I, I had favor real high. Well, speaking of stud defenseman, number three on our list, Brant Clark. Yeah, I think for sure. Like he's, he's the highest ceiling guy. We between him and another guy, he's probably our highest ceiling guy. He could be, if he puts it all together, he could be a perennial, you know, top defenseman kind of guy. I think his defensive game, it's hard to tell with, like, the juniors because, you know, they 
their kids, basically. But like, I think his defensive game could use some work. But his offensive game, he's he's definitely the top defenseman there right now. And who knows what that translates to in the NHL? So, yeah. Um, do you guys see his skating as a detriment, or do you think he just has an ugly stride, but he's going to be totally fine? I think he's just ugly, and I mean. Like someone said, like even with that stride, he puts himself in the spots he needs to be. So if you could fix that or whatever, like he he thinks the game well enough to where it puts him in the right spots, even if he has an ugly stride. Yeah. Um, heck, I know I'll upset some people, but Dowdy's not the greatest looking skater to me. You know, um, I see a lot of Dowdy in Clark. Believe it or not, I, once Dowdy decides that he's he's going to start slowing down, hopefully Clark will be ready to step right in and and take the torch from him. You know, I I think that was kind of the thinking when we when we drafted him too. You know, who's going to be our next Drew Dowdy? Who's going to be the next guy? Our top defenseman going to go out there and push the offense from the back end. You know, and and eat up some minutes, and and I I, I think we have him. I think we have a guy that can do that. I I think his ceiling is that guy. He's going to be our top defenseman for a long time, and that's why I have him so high. That's why we have him so high. We all agreed about how high he is. So, all right, Rob, let's move on to number two on the list, Arthur Kaliev. Yeah, I mean, we've seen what he's done this season so far. I think he's. Again, one of our sniper guys who we just need to come through, and he's done it playing limited minutes this season. I think we would all hope he gets a shot at a top six role by the end of the season. But even still, like about the only thing you could want from him is a little bit more quickness or speed, like that in, in those areas. But other than that, I mean, he's developed his board game super well this year. His shots, you know, we. We all know it's among one of the best prospect-wise, so I, I I like this spot for him. Yeah. Um, just for some perspective, he's 20 years old. Um, with the exception of one other person that will remain nameless because I think they can all figure it out. But the next youngest guy on the team – is Blake Lazat at 24. Um, Callie is only 20, and he's a forward on our team and and belongs. I think as much as – I've been the one that has said, hey, let's send him down and let him cook some down in, in the minors and everything. He's stuck up here now. The coaching staff loves all the other things he does. Uh, if you – if you've been able to read and listen to, to McClellan talk about him, McClellan just marvels at so many uh, veteran things he does with the puck, away from the puck. The way he can just lift pucks out of the zone to clear, I don't know if any of you guys ever noticed that. He, he can just backhand a puck perfectly without icing all the time. And it's just little tiny touch things he does. He just has a knack, and when he starts getting up onto a scoring line, he has an elite shot. And I'm not elite for our organization. He has an elite shot for the National Hockey League. He gets so much bend and whip into, into his shots, and just the way the release comes off, is it's just something you can't teach. And I, I think he's... I think he's a top line winger. I really do. That's what his ceiling is. Agreed. I can't wait till he's up there full time. And his quickness and movements very underrated. Maybe it's because he thinks. I don't know if he gets to places because he's a quick thinker or he's just faster than what he looks. But I really don't see him out of position too much. You know. No, it's not about being about out of position. It's like I don't think he's. I don't think he's using his speed to challenge people. I think if there was a space where he could improve, like, and add a new element to his game, it'd be a little bit more quickness to kind of like, you know, sure. threaten, you know, 
potential breakaway stuff like that. Like, just I just think about like he reminds me somewhat of Toffoli, where like he came in super good shot, thought the game well, but he was always seen as a touch slow. Whereas now you look at Toffoli and he's yeah. dangling around people on one leg. So you know, twenty years old. I, I'm yeah, I can't, I can't wait. wait. I, I, I can't wait to see when he's twenty three. Right. Yeah. I could see him being the guy that uh, other teams' penalty killers are focusing on because he's he's just our top power play threat. All right. Our David Poster. There it is. All right. Here we are, number one on our list. Quentin Byfield. Yeah, I don't think this is too much of a surprise. I mean, he's he's been unlucky this season that he was hurt to start the year, but I mean, he's probably our highest ceiling guy. I think he has a really high floor at worst. You you know, you can probably see him as like a second, third line guy if he fails out in some way or another, but like he's huge. He skates well. He has a lot of huge skill. Yeah. He's huge. And I mean, I think if you want anything out of him, it's you want to see it more this year where he's playing you know, 10 minutes a game and we're coming off that Oilers game. He looks kind of invisible out there and he only played like eight minutes, but you know, there's been times where he's taken over shifts and you want to see a little bit more out of him this season, but I think he's still got the highest ceiling out of all of our guys. He's yeah. Six, four, six, five, 200 plus pounds. I think he's two fifteen even. Um, mm-hmm. Skates like the wind. Watching the few games he played in Ontario, it's just so apparent how fast he is, how big he is, how skilled he is. They're... Now that he's with any big 19. club, he, he is a bit invisible a little bit. And I think that just has everything to do with him being 19 years old. And... I, it's not a he can't. It's not a, an issue of him not being able to keep up. It, not at all. No. But I I think it's just an app. It's it's a it's a maturity thing. He needs just to mature and get as much experience as he can. I don't I don't want. I hope we don't scratch him. You know, he he will get better. He's I, definitely. I agree. I I only brought up that as that's one of the few complaints you could have about him as of right now is that he's stop, stop re- rebutting. Uh, like I'm, I'm not, talking about something you said, you're taking things too personal. No, 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 I'm not taking it personally. Well, you that's the second time in a row now that you said, well, it's not that I wasn't talking about you. I wasn't talking to anything. I don't even listen to what you're saying there. Wow. Wow. I'm sitting there preparing my own statements while you're talking. I have no idea what you're saying. So obviously what I'm saying is, is rubbing you a little bit. <laughs> Well, I mean, clearly you said it because he looks right at me, and then you said it invisible. <laughs> I'm looking at the, at the damn camera, moron. Yeah. He he doesn't want your thoughts influencing what he's going to talk about, so he just uh, mutes you. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, apparently from uh, our little pre-podcast talk, you you listen to you listen to a lot of podcasts, huh? And I see I I don't, I've never listened to any of those things because what Rodney just said. I don't want anyone. I want my own opinion, man. I don't want. I don't. I want to make my own opinion, and that's it. I don't want to regurgitate what other people are saying. Yeah, I, I like to to aggregate or like get everyone's opinion and kind of build my own opinion off of that. Like, sure. You know. Sure. It's the same way I look at stats. You look. You use stats to to make what you're seeing how you can like like match those up. You know I, mean? I like to use stats to go, yeah, Byfield was invisible last night. And I look at it, well, played eight minutes. It's kind of like, right. they go hand in hand, you know. I just, I hate that he's got eight games under his belt. And he only has one goal. Kind of sounds like what Mike predicts for Martin Furt, right? Right. One goal, one goal in 10 games. That sucks. And he should have, remember those words? Am I allowed to say Mike? Or do we have to? To pay him money every yeah, time just just right right bleed it. He he never signed the contract, so you can you can you can say it. You can mention the name. 
Plus, I got an, another mic reference for you, uh, Quentin Byfield. When he when he's flying down the ice, he's got a little bit of that Mike Bandano Jersey flow. Yeah. As he's just flying down the ice. Yeah. Good to see. Anything else on Byfield? Oh no, no, but that's that's a good list. That's a good list. Where do you see Byfield in in, in a few years? Is he uh, taking Kopitar's spot? Um. Yeah, in in a, in, in two years, sure. I can see, I can see Dano taking over, and then Byfield playing second line center for a little bit until it, the app the maturity process has fully developed. So there might have to be a season where Byfield has to play a second line center. A season, maybe maybe two. Hopefully not two. But yes, I can see the torch being passed. So we have our we have our next Andre Kopitar in Byfield, and we have our next Drew Doughty in Grant Clark. So hopefully that spells a couple more cups the way it did for the aforementioned. Here's hoping. That's what that's what fans do, right? Right. We hope. All right. Does anybody have any honorable mentions, Darren? Ooh. Honorable mentions. Yeah, my, my honorable mention is uh, Andre Lee. I, I I think I had him at 10 uh, on my own list. I, I think the one thing I like about him is he's huge. There's not, he's huge. huge. And there's not a lot of guys like him in our system. Where, and it's going to be a weird like, comparison because their names are basically the same, but Andres Lee is a guy who I see him being where he could be, you know, big in front of the net. He scores a lot of power play goals just because of his strength and his skill in front of the net. You know, obviously he could, he could end up being nothing for the Kings, but I think he's a guy who has a lot of potential and could be, you know, the top, top nine, top six kind of guy for us with a lot of power play potential for him. Rob, do you have one? No, I don't have an honorable mention because there's just too many. That, that's what's so crazy. You know, that's what we've been talking about. The word logjam has been said too many times over the last few podcasts we've done because I don't I don't think people fully understand what logjam. It there needs to be another word for it because it's it's not a logjam. It's it's a triple logjam. You know, the the honorable mention stuff. You you could go down a whole list of of Akil Thomases and Aiden Dudases and and Sodergrands and Spences and we had, we didn't even mention Pinelli, who was drafted really high for us last last year. That's pretty sick score and, and some, you know, uh, Kirsanoff and I, there's just too many. There's just too many. And all these guys have to, you know, they're good players. Well, the trade deadline's coming up in just over a month, so maybe that'll clear up some of the logjam. Right, and and sickening things too is. We we omitted guys because they they already have you know thirty plus games or played last season whatnot for to not be eligible for Calder consideration. You still got Leas Anderson and Jared Anderson Dolans and Velarde. You know, Velarde, what the hell, man? What are we gonna do with all these guys? It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So I don't have any honorable mentions. I just, yeah. I mean, it's the one, it's a good thing. It's a blessing and a curse, you know? Yeah. So. Um, some, some stats about our, our list of top 10 guys. We had uh, three defensemen. Right. Back to back to back. We had uh, a couple guys on there uh, in Chromiak, uh, Faber, Clark, that are not in the AHL yet. So we got we, we had some prospects on there with some, you know, some unknowns because there's not a whole lot. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen a whole lot of them. I watched as much as I could World Junior things, and, and you catch uh, OHL highlights as much as you can. You get to see some of the magic, but – you know how how many how many games have you actually sat and watched these guys? It's it's tough coming up with lists and have your own ideas, right? So, but 
the other guys on the list besides those three, we've seen plenty of, and I think the future is bright. Like everyone's been saying about the organization, the future is pretty bright. Was just going to say the same thing. Yep. All right, Kings fans, that's our show for today. Until next time, go Kings, go. Go Kings.